Hello, Roger here from the Virtual Technology Laboratory of the University of Idaho, and I'm here today to walk you through how to take geospatial datasets representing the topography of a terrain and process them for Unity 3D using the open source Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, also known as GDAL. The process is based on the method described in this blog post by Alistair Atkinson, but I've adapted it to suit my needs, and I'll also walk you through how to install GDAL on a Windows machine. Uh, that seems to be one of the primary assembly blocks uh, for repeating this process. So as a primer, terrain data, as you may or may not know, is represented as a digital elevation model, or DEM. These are typically raster data sets that are very similar to image files you might be familiar with. As a matter of fact, some digital elevation models are stored as TIFFs. Others might be stored in proprietary formats, <coughs> ESRI, that you probably haven't heard of unless you have been working with geospatial data sets before. Unlike most of images, these files actually contain floating point numbers representing the height of a terrain at a location of each pixel instead of RGB or red, green, blue byte values. Secondly, these data sets are georeferenced, meaning that the file contains metadata specifying the location in the world that it is representing and the projection of the data contained within the data set. Elevation data can be obtained from a variety of sources. One of the larger databases is the U. SGS's National Elevation Dataset, uh, and that covers the continuous U.S. as well as Alaska and Hawaii. At most locations, they have at least 10 meter resolution. In some locations, they even have 1 meter resolution. Uh, you might want to consider the size of your game, um, of, of your scene that you'll be importing. To keep things manageable inside of Unity 3D Game Engine, I always suggest keeping your terrains to a pixel size of 2049 by 2049 or smaller. Also keep in mind that Unity optimizes the terrains by making the terrain data square and a power of 2 plus 1 in size. The maximum single tile size that can be imported is actually 4097 by 4097. That this would be this would need to be done procedurally. It's also possible to tile terrains, but this can result in other headaches when it comes to splatting terrains or interactively deforming terrains. Also, terrains beyond 2049 by 2049 start to become unwieldy for normal computers that end users might be using. So with those considerations in mind, let's start by installing GDAL. So open, go ahead and open your favorite browser, and then navigate to gdal.org. Uh, for this case, we'll be installing on a Windows machine. So we'll go to Downloads. Then we'll go down to this Windows section. We'll go to GIS Internals. Uh, basically, uh, this guy has been nice enough to take the source code and compile it uh, for Windows, um, for a variety of uh, uh, compile or with a variety of compilers. Fortunately, that makes it a little bit confusing because there's so many to choose from. But what we're after is uh, stable releases, and then we're interested in GDAL 2.1.0. For x64 compiled with the Microsoft Visual Studio compiler 2013. And then of those, we're interested in the core components, which is this one over here, generic installer for the GDAL core components. So go ahead and click that. Wait for it to download. And then I can go ahead and launch this installer. 
Okay, so I, I guess I actually need to do more info. It's not code signed, but I trust it. Typical is fine. By default, GDAL will be installed inside of our Program Files folder. There are several ways of using GDAL. GDAL provides drivers for reading and manipulating and writing datasets from a variety of programming languages, including C++, Python, Java, and C Sharp. GDAL also provides a set of command line programs for processing geospatial datasets. That is uh, what's contained inside of uh, this GDAL directory. Uh, by the way, if you don't see the .exe extensions here, you can go to View, and then to Options, and then to Change Folder and Search Options, and then under View, uh, you'll want to make sure that Hide Extensions for Known File Types is unchecked. I also like to uh, configure mine to show hidden files, folders, and drives, as well as to uh, not hide empty drives or or folder merge, merge conflicts or protected operating system files. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, some of uh, GDAL's core functionality is implemented as Python scripts. Uh, these won't work unless you have Python installed. Um, I do have Python installed and I believe these are using Python 2.7. Now, uh, now that we've taken care of the installation, uh, we might want to go, we can go back to here and we can see that in order to have the bindings to work, the location of our core components must be included manually in the path environment variable. But basically what that means is if I start a command line or command prompt, and then I try to run the program that's in here. Uh, let's uh, let's try to run GDAL info. My command prompt can't run this program because it doesn't know where it is. So I need to add this path, C program files GDAL, to my Windows path environmental variable. So to do that, I'll copy the path. And then I need to uh, go to this computer. So I actually typed my, but I guess it makes more sense to type this PC. Then I can right click and go to properties. And then from here, I want to click advanced system settings. And then environment and variables. And then under system variables, I want to go down to path and then click edit, and then at the end, I want to append my GDAL path. So I need a semicolon, and then I can copy and or paste in the path. I'll hit OK. And then um, in order to get that to work, I'll actually, well, there's a trick that you can do. So you can go to your task manager. And then you can try to kill your explorer. If you can find it. Actually, let's try. Oh. End task. And then we'll go file, run new task, explorer.
uh, been inside of. Well, actually, let's restart this command prompt. Path. All right, so it, that actually added our path here. If you don't see that, then uh, you can restart your computer, and then when it restarts, it should read in your new environmental variables. Uh, so now, if I type gdal info, um, I actually get, it actually runs gdal info, and gdal info is basically telling me that uh, I did not specify the name of a file that it can look at. Uh, but basically, at this point, gdal is installed. So in the next tutorial, we'll go over to how to use gdal to process ADAM for Unity. Thank you.